isn't that amazing? Isn't that special? I think it is. And Zelda, I want to suggest that there's something very Zelda-like about the menorah and about the miracle of Hanukkah. It continues to. It keeps burning. <laughs> it keeps on burning. It never loses its energy. How many of you know the story of Hanukkah? Something about it? A little bit? I'm going to make it very simple. About 2,200 years ago, there was a cultural revolution that swept across the civilized world, mostly in the Middle East, North Africa, and then the Mediterranean Basin, which was called Hellenism. Hellenism was a noxious mix of philosophy and hedonism. And Hellenism sought to suffocate the soul of spirituality. At that time, there was only one monotheistic faith in the whole world, and that monotheistic, monotheistic faith was Judaism, and Hellenism sought to suffocate monotheism. They said, if we cannot see it, if we cannot touch it, if we cannot understand it, then it cannot exist. We can't worship a God we can't see. We can't reach out and trust in a God we can't touch or taste. And the Jewish people, for the most part, did not have the courage and fortitude that they should have had. It's a very difficult time. Many people were murdered, many people were tortured, and many people caved in. It's a small band of committed Jews, very small band. They were from a family in Hebrew called Chashmonai. In English, they're called Hasmonean, a group of temple priests. And they were the only ones who refused to give in. And they initiated a revolt against these occupying forces. The battles took place during 24 and a half months. For more than two years, it was miracle after miracle. For more than two years, every betting person was sure that monotheism was over forever. And for more than two years, the battles raged and it concluded on the 24th day of Kislev. The very next day, the temple priest came back to the Beit HaMikdash, to the ancient temple that stood in Jerusalem. And just as a little historical curio, you may be interested to know that the first and second temples stood on the exact spot at Mount Moriah for a sum total of 820 years. For 820 years, that was the spiritual ground zero for all people who believed in the monotheism and the creator of heaven and earth. They came to the temple, and they couldn't find any pure olive oil to kindle the menorah. It looked something like this menorah. Not exactly, but something. And they finally, miraculously, found one little cruise, one little jug. And that, that little cruise could only burn for 24 hours, the maximum, with the greatest of conditions. Usually it burned for 12 hours, maybe 24 hours, maybe. And they kindled that oil, and it burned, and it burned, and it burned, and it burned for eight days. Now, you could ask a simple question. If you're a student of history, if you're a student of theology, so we have 24 months of miracles. What are we celebrating just like the last week? How can we focus on a menorah that was kindled that burned miraculously? How about all of the military victories that were impossible? How about all of the other little details where everything just happened to fall into place? I mean, this was like a tiny band of, of religious uh, acolytes of, of, of fervent passionate Jews who, who were fighting like, like the Soviet Union. It was impossible. Nobody imagined they could win. We're not commemorating that. We talk about the menorah. And every day of Hanukkah, we're adding another light and another light. But the answer is that the menorah is the sum and the substance of that whole two years. Why? Listen carefully, Dr. Knight. You're a very smart man. Why don't you listen to this carefully? You know and I know that anybody could fight for survival. That's part of human nature. That's how God created us. If you corner a cat, the cat will come out and fight. Yes? That's, right. That's a reasonable thing to say. How many people can fight for an ideal? You're not fighting for survival. You have food. You have a roof over your head. You have a loving family. But there's an ideal, a religious philosophy. How many people are going to fight for that? A much smaller number. A much smaller number. There are people who will fight for an ideal. And, and they find that courage and they find that stamina and their souls light up very briefly and then as soon as the extenuating circumstances come to a close that courage and that bravery fades away into the background it simply disappears this is the human condition we're capable of extraordinary bravery and it flares up and it flickers brightly and then it disappears how about living like that every day of your life 
How about being a hero and going above and beyond each and every single day? Even when the circumstances are not extenuated, even when you don't have to fight for survival, even when whatever ideal it was you want to accomplish has been accomplished already, but you still live above and beyond rhyme and reason. Like Zelda, always going above and beyond. How many people do that? That's the message of the menorah. We're celebrating not an extraordinary event that once happened. We're celebrating not the fact that somebody could find strength in a moment where everything goes dark and the heroes come out. We're celebrating the idea that the core essence of our souls, which is a piece of God, can be kindled and can burn brightly every single day. We celebrate Hanukkah for eight nights, but the truth is that the message of Hanukkah is supposed to resonate all year long. And the message is, share your light, share it with somebody else. You know, you'll see when we're gonna light these candles, I want you to watch carefully. It's not gonna happen like that. You're gonna have to stand there and hold your candle. No, no, you're gonna start over there. And every person's gonna take a few minutes. It's gonna, it's gonna take a few seconds until the light finally catches on, and then it's burning, and then you can transfer it to the next person. You gotta have patience. You can't expect to change somebody in a moment. You have to be devoted. You have to be committed to kindling lamps, to knowing that each and every human being has a wonderful repository of holiness. Everybody's got courage. Everybody's got faith. Everybody's got perseverance. Everybody has passion. It's just beneath the surface. And if we ignite those lights and we keep sharing the light, then with God's help, the whole candelabra gets lit up. And that means a world perfected, a world healed. That's what we hope, that's what we pray for. This is in, 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 in the Hebrew language, in the Jewish lexicon, we call that the Mashiach. The Mashiach means a world that's filled with prosperity, with plenty, with goodliness and God consciousness. And that's what we hope and pray for each and every day. Amen. Mm -hmm. So now, good doctor.